Welcome to lecture number 15 for ECE 463 Modern Control, Cart and Pendulum System. Now, what we looked at before was how to come up with the dynamics for a gantry system and cart and pendulum system. In this lecture, we're going to look at how to control it. Now, for the cart and pendulum system, this is a system we were not able to control using proportional derivative control. Uh, you can balance it. If you ever try to balance a yardstick stick on your hand, you know it can be done. But just using the two PD gains wasn't able to do it. Pole placement can do anything. Pole placement can place the poles anywhere you want. So if I feed back all four gains, or all four states, position, angle, velocity, angular velocity, I should be able to put the poles anywhere I want. So let's try it out. First, as a review, the nonlinear model for a cart and pendulum system where the base is 2 kilograms, the length is 1 meter, the ball is 1 kilogram, is as follows. The linearized dynamics has a 4 by 4 A matrix, your B matrix, and if you check the eigenvalues, it's unstable. Of course, it falls down. Poles are at 0, 0, minus 3.83, and the one that kills you, pull at plus 3.83. So if I do nothing, it falls over, decaying as e to the plus 3.83t. Well, let's come up with the requirements. Again, requirements are all important. They kind of lead the design. Suppose I want to come up with a feedback controller to give this step response. I want it to go have a DC gain of 1. I want to have no overshoot in the step response and the settling time right about 4 seconds. What that tells you is that I want to have the closed loop dominant pole at s equals minus 1. Now, this is a fourth order system and pole placement places all four poles. So the dominant pole goes at minus 1. The other three poles go somewhere. Um, let's call it minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. Okay, that's probably not the best place for them, but uh, for now, let's, let's go with it. So to use pole placement, what I first have to do is input the system. So here's your A matrix, B matrix, and the eigenvalues of A is unstable. I'll then find the feedback gains using the MATLAB command pull placement, and I get my four gains, and it's a check. So it's good to check your answers. Are the eigenvalues of A minus BKX equal to minus 1, 2, 3, and 4? And yep, they are. So I did it right. Now find KR to make the DC gain 1. Uh, C was 1, 0, 0, 0. I'm measuring position. And so I need a gain of minus 4.89 to make the DC gain 1. So let's try it out. In MATLAB, I can check the step response. Here I'm going to look at two outputs, the position and angle, just for fun. It gives me a 2 by 4 matrix for C and a 2 by 1 matrix for D. Input the closed loop system, take the step response, and here's what you get. This says I actually have undersuit, kind of a strange response, and the settling time is right about for maybe six seconds. Again, the poles at minus two, three, and four are have some effect. They're not that fast. And the angle seems pretty reasonable. Again, this is in radians, so it goes up to about 0.6 radians. One radian is about 60 degrees, so that's about 36 degree lean. Yeah, fairly reasonable. Next thing to check is the input reasonable. One way to do that is instead of plotting the output, Let's plot the input. The input u is kr times r minus kx times x. So keep the same closed loop a matrix, same input b matrix, change c and d. If I make c equal to minus kx, d equal to kr, then my output is u. So taking the step response and plotting u versus time looks like this. That just tells me as long as I'm able to apply about 5 newtons of force, it'll work. If I go into the nonlinear simulation, this is the cart and pendulum system. I'm going to change the feedback gains kx. This came from my pole placement algorithm. There's kr to make the dc gain 1. Now take the step response. At any given instant, I'll calculate the u based upon the states and the set point. Apply that input to the cart, find the acceleration, integrate uh, to get the position and angles 10 milliseconds in the future, 
move time forward 10 milliseconds, repeat, and here's what it looks like. So here's that cart and pendulum system. Uh, I've got the feedback gains KX, KR. I'll calculate the feedback control at every 10, 10 milliseconds and apply it. And, drum roll, doo -doo -doo -doo. initially, in order to go right, I've got to go left. What it's doing is I've got to get the pendulum to lean. That's that undershoot that I saw in the step response. I don't like it, but physically this has to happen. If I don't get it leaning to the right, I won't be able to go right. So to get it to go lean right, I got to go left. This is kind of how it works. I designed it for poles at minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. And it looks like it's working. I've got no overshoot. Nice low system. And there's my step response. After six seconds, I change the set point from plus one to minus one. And here's the step in the opposite direction. Again, to go left, I first move right, get it to lean, then slide over and catch the beam, stopping at minus one. So it looks like that worked. I put the poles at minus one, two, three, and four, the dominant poles at minus one, dominant ish. And I get the no overshoot, settling times about four seconds ish. Again, pretty much just what I designed. And in a few seconds, it'll show you the step response. The step response will be very similar to the MATLAB linear simulation. This is actually nonlinear, uh, but the angle isn't leaning that much, so the linear model works fairly well. Now, notice I put the poles at minus one, two, three, and four. The dominant pole at minus one makes sense. So if I, this is my A matrix for the cart, B matrix for the cart. So there's AC, BC. Put the poles at minus one, two, three, four, I get that. The pole at minus one kind of makes sense. That's my dominant pole. The other three poles, I really don't know where to put them. Uh, pretty much anywhere works, at least on paper. What I want is to keep the gain small, but keep these poles fast relative to your dominant pole. So arbitrarily, let's put the poles at minus one, four, four, and four. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, the KR to make the DC gain one should be minus 13.06. If I try these feedback gains, that should also work. So if I copy those, go into my simulation, change KX, oops, come back, come back, come back, there you are. Here's KX. Here's KR, copy, paste. Now if I run with these new improved feedback gains, it ought to look just about the same. The reason it looks the same is I've got the same dominant pole. It's at minus one. The other three poles are somewhere, as long as they're fast, I really don't care where they are. And again, the step response looks almost the same. I'll fast forward in time and show you the step response when it's done. Let's, let's do, have it do a step. When I come back to minus one, notice it's going to first go right, get it to lean. And then I'll come back left to catch the pendulum. There it is. I first go right, get the pendulum to lean left. Now I slide over and catch it. So that's with the real poles. And I can get complex poles if you really want. I'm not really sure why you'd want to, but you could. So let's do minus one plus J times 1.5 minus one, 
minus j times 1.5. So that's where I want to put the poles. Get a different set of feedback gains. Recalculate kr. Apply these new improved gains. I should now have a little bit of overshoot because I have complex dominant poles. And it turns out this is the same as that gain. Let's try it. So I'll give it a step input. It gets it to lean right. Comes over and catches it. I've got complex poles, so I should overshoot just a little bit. So there I'm at 1. And there's your overshoot. It's now going to come back. Again, pole placement, you can do anything. I can get complex poles too if you want. So that's the current pendulum system. With pole placement, I can find the four feedback gains. This is kind of hard to guess. I've got too many degrees of freedom. But uh, pole placement doesn't really care. It's where do you want to put the poles. I've got four constraints. It'll find the four degrees of freedom to match those four constraints. And here's the resulting step response. I've got this undershoot that you're kind of stuck with to get the ball, to get the, the cart to go right. I first have to go left, get the beam to lean. Here's my overshoot and reaches one. So in summary, balancing a yardstick on your hand isn't all that hard, at least for a computer. Pull placement, or Boscora, allows you to find stabilizing feedback gains. And it requires you to measure all four states. I've got to measure position, velocity, angle, and angular velocity. So that was the Carton Pendulum system. Suppose I flip gravity around and come up with the gantry system. In that case, the gantry system will be just like the Carton Pendulum system, just change the sign of gravity. That's the only term that changes. That changes the sign of these two numbers. And more significantly, that changes the eigenvalues from being plus and minus 3.83 to plus or minus j, 3.83. So this is an oscillatory system. Using pole placement, I want to get this response. No overshoot, DC gain of 1, 4 second settling time. And again, that tells you the dominant pole goes to minus 1. So I'm going to pick pole placement to put the dominant pole at minus 1. The other three poles just go somewhere. And what I could do is put them at minus 1, 2, 3, and 4. If I do that, here's my feedback gains. And as a check, using those feedback gains with your gantry system A matrix, here's the poles at minus 1, 2, 3, and 4. That checks. KR should be 4.89 to make the DC gain 1. And if I check the step response in MATLAB, it looks like it meets the requirements. I go from 0 to 1 in about 4 seconds. It's more like 5 or 6 seconds to the other poles at minus 2 and minus 3. And the lean is maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.06 radians, about 5 degrees. So again, that looks reasonable. If I look at the input, instead of making, if I make the C and D matrix equal to minus Kx and Kr, I'm now looking at U. The input is about 5. As long as I can have a force of 5 newtons, my control law can do it. If I now want to go to the nonlinear simulation, I just take the same feedback gains and apply it, and here's the response. Uh, the funner part is to actually see the animation. So here's the system gantry.m. I change the feedback gains to be what I calculated and run it. This puts the poles at minus 1, 2, 3, and 4. Here's my step input. It comes over, goes to the right. and then stops at minus one, or stops at one. Again, no overshoot, which is what I expect. I've got real poles. Settling time is about four seconds. And there you have it. Just for fun, give it a step to go the other way, and you get about the same thing. Notice in this case, I don't have it going the wrong direction, but when I go right, I can start going right immediately. 
to go left, I can go left immediately. It starts to swing, so the input has to kind of have a little hiccup in it to catch the oscillations. That's what you saw on the input graph. There's a little bit of a hiccup. That's trying to catch the beam, keep it from oscillating. And there's the response, the poles at minus 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now again, the dominant pole kind of makes sense. If I take the gantry system and put the pole somewhere else, let's try minus 1, minus 4, minus 4, minus 4. I get a different set of gains. So here's my feedback gains. Change this, and I now I have a new feedback control law. Now the poles are at minus 1, minus 4, minus 4, minus 4. And it turns out for this system, that's not always the case, just for this one happens to be the case, that the first gain is also KR. Uh, run that simulation. If you go away. And here's the step response. Uh, note, one of the strengths of pole placement is I can put the poles anywhere. One of the weaknesses of pole placement is I can put the poles anywhere. The dominant pole makes sense. Uh, if I want a four second settling time, the dominant pole goes to minus one. The other three poles uh, appears, appears that they really don't matter. In fact, they actually do matter. They affect the gains, which affects the input. But in terms of the step response at the output, as long as the dominant pole is at minus one, I'll have no overshoot, I'll have a settling time of four seconds, and if I pick KR right, I'll have a DC gain of one. So it really doesn't matter where you put the other three poles, at least from the output standpoint. So I might bring up a question, well, if I do care about the input, some spots are better than others. How do I find out where to put those other three gains? Well, one solution is experience. That way the more senior control engineers get better results than the younger ones. That's always good from my standpoint. Another approach is to try to come up with the optimal feedback gains. That'll lead them to optimal control, and we'll be doing that after the second test. But as for now with pole placement, again, I can get any response I want. Pick the poles, pole placement will put the poles anywhere you want. So in summary, controlling a gantry system also isn't that hard, at least for a computer. Pole placement, or Boscora, allows you to find stabilizing feedback gains. It requires measurements of all four states, position, velocity, angle, angular velocity. But if you do have those measurements, then I can put the poles anywhere I want. So that's lecture number 15 for ECE 463, Modern Control. Pole placement applied to a cart and a gantry system.